Hello everybody, welcome back to The Grudge. This is part two of our carburetor rebuild for our 1978 Honda CB750. Part one was the disassembly and the beginning of the cleaning process. I introduced you to the very basic vapor blaster that I built and I showed you the huge difference having a vapor blaster makes when it comes to cleaning aluminum, especially carburetors. So in this video, we'll finish the cleaning and start on the reassembly. So a couple of the carburetor bodies looked pretty dirty on the outside. I think all that was superficial though. Uh, from looking on the inside, I'm pretty pleased with these carburetors. I think they're in pretty good shape. Uh, regardless, we're not going to cut any corners. First off, let's finish vapor blasting this carburetor. After vapor blasting, I cleaned everything really well and removed the uh, air cap plugs, I think they're called, the little plugs you remove for when you're sinking your carbs, and also the uh, slide needle seats on the inside just with a punch and a plastic hammer. There you also see my favorite screwdriver. Um, I actually do have a proper screwdriver now, you'll get to see it in the next video. After we're done with that, we give everything a good soaking and cleaning with carburetor cleaner. Once that's done, we give everything a good clean out with compressed air. So, so far I've soaked all the carburetor parts in thinner, cleaned all that out, vapor blasted everything, cleaned all that out, carburetor, used carburetor cleaner on everything, and I've cleaned all that out now. Everything still has a round or two in the ultrasonic cleaner as well, so I guess maybe it's overkill, but uh, I just didn't want to take any chances. Gave all the parts another good wipe down, everything was looking really good. So let's just throw the major components of the carburetor together so we can get a sense on how far we've come so far. You can already see just a huge difference in uh, how they were before and after. So here I get to fire up my new buffer and uh, shine up these carburetor tops a little bit. Uh, I, I bought the wrong finishing compound so didn't really get a final state polishing but I think it looks okay. So the ultrasonic cleaner arrived and my son was quite eager to help me make the uh, unboxing segment for this video. It went with the 6 liter version uh, for, for the cleaner. I was hoping that it was going to be big enough and also I liked the fact that it had a valve on the side. I'm really glad that I did because I was able to fit all four carb bodies plus a lot of extra parts in there all at the same time. So I was just using um, simple green and distilled water inside the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't think I'll be doing it exactly like that in the future, but it did work pretty good. There you see all the car bodies done. They don't really look a lot different, maybe a little darker. Gave everything another really good rinsing. Made sure to wash all of that simple green out of everything. And dried it all off. Everything was looking pretty good at this point and I was feeling uh, really good about beginning reassembly. Here we can see the simple fixture that I made. I'm calling it my docking plate. It's really just to help you hold everything still while you get all this stuff back together. Just mentioning I already have the seals in for the uh, throttle linkage shaft. I've also attached the cable stay, the bracket that holds the push-pull cables for the throttle. The first bit that you're going to see me bolting on there is just the uh, lever for the choke spring assembly. So once I remembered where the inboard side of the spring clipped on there, I managed to get the linkage back together. For a second, I thought it hooked into the little notch there, but it goes back farther. It's actually a little bit more tension on the spring. 
then really if you want all that to stay where it's supposed to be then you have to make sure that you put the washer and the little spring clip in there otherwise it'll just keep popping out i found having an assortment of picks and small screwdrivers at hand was pretty helpful also a pair of needle nose pliers getting that spring clip back on can be a little bit tricky but as long as you keep pressure on the spring so that the uh, clip can snap back in its spot it's way easier putting it on than it is taking it off now let's install the first part of the choke assembly on carburetor number two biggest thing here to remember would be to uh, just be careful with the cutouts on the choke linkage for the plates don't get them hung up on the o-rings of the seals damage any of that I'm getting ready to bolt carburetor number three onto the docking plate and I'm just pointing out that I've already got the seals and everything installed. I've had the carburetor about half together and then back apart a few times at this stage. A couple of false starts, uh, not a big deal but just made uh, shooting video a little bit more difficult. First let's bolt the fuel pump linkage onto the side of carburetor number two. This lever eventually connects to the main throttle linkage with a little spring so that every time you activate the throttle it can um, activate the diaphragm pump. So here you see me just sort of visually going over everything just sort of have a mental checklist going on before I proceed with bolting carburetor number three on. I did have carburetor two and three bolted together just a few minutes before this but I took them apart again because I didn't like the tubing that I had in for the vent lines. So I'm just about back at the stage that I was at before taking it apart again when it occurred to me that I needed to take that throttle or the choke plate out of there so I could move that shaft over enough to give me the clearance to get the spring where it needed to be. So I push the uh, choke linkage over, reconnect all the hoses again. And then at that point, I'm able to bolt the carburetors back up to the plate. All the fuel lines and everything are attached. And then that enables me to do the next step a lot easier, I feel. Let's have a sneak preview of where all this stuff is gonna sit. I'm just kind of describing where the two separate choke linkages connect to one another, and then we just have to add the spring pressure. I couldn't use the original audio from when I was making this video. Hopefully my voiceover is uh, doing a good enough job describing what it is that I'm doing on video. I do have some non-blurry footage coming up here of how this assembly goes together, but here I'm gonna clamp the uh, choke shaft on the uh, carburetor number two so that it'll stay where I need it to be while I connect number three to it. I don't have those vice grips tight at all and they bend slightly and where the bend is there's no teeth so it's not marring the shaft. So you're gonna see me wind tension onto that spring and then remove that little hook pick that I have out of there and then slide carburetor three uh, choke shaft into place. I didn't really need to remove that pick. Um, it just added an extra step in there. So I was having a little bit of trouble getting the cutout over the O-ring, but once I got it into place and managed to get it slid over and then once you get the spring clipped in there then it holds it in place felt pretty good at this point after taking the carburetor apart and putting it back together a couple of times this is the farthest that i had gone with it i really wanted to make sure at this point that there wasn't something that i had uh, forgotten about that was going to make me take these apart again i really wanted to start installing the throttle linkage but i figured that it was probably better to finish putting the choke plates back together I didn't want the choke linkages sliding left or right and possibly damaging or uncoupling that spring and I really wanted to take those vice grips off. You get to watch me sort of awkwardly install this zip tie on there to hold the choke assembly in place so that I don't have to struggle with it while I'm putting those small um, screws in that hold the choke plates in place.
last thing you want to do is cross thread those. I really didn't want to take this apart again, so I'm just trying to make sure that everything is back in place. Getting these choke plates back on seems to be the source of a lot of aggravation for people putting these carburetors back together. And I can understand why. It has all the elements to uh, comprise that perfect storm of frustration when you're trying to put fiddly little things like this together. Plates, so I'm not even trying to make sure that they're in the right spot. I'm just making sure I don't cross thread the bolts and I'm just snugging them up. Final positioning of those will be done once all four of the carburetors are back together again. So here now we're getting ready to install the actuator for the throttle linkage. There's just a uh, bushing and a spring. So the easiest way to get it together there is just hook the spring on the main part of it. Then put the actual part that attaches to the shaft in place up against the spring and then just turn it until it snaps into place. Then just make sure it's in there all the way so that you have room for the washer. And then there's a snap ring. So if you're having trouble getting the snap ring in place, it's probably because you haven't pushed the bushing in all the way. So, get the plastic washer in place. That's kind of about where it'll be. So now we're installing the the uh, carburetor slides for carburetor two and number three throttle valves. I guess you want to call them. I'm gonna make sure that the needles are lined up. Everything's really clean. Uh, I just have a really thin coating of oil on them just to help them. You can't install the uh, the throttle shaft before these are in place. So I'm just kind of giving a little bit of a helping hand, lining it up with my pick there, just so I'm not just cramming the throttle linkage into place. Just sort of coax it through the seals. Here I realized that I didn't put the spring on, which if I had gotten the linkage all together up to the point where I would have been installing the spring, I would have had to have taken that all apart again. So. I didn't get too far in before realizing that, thankfully. So once again, take a little bit of the weight off of the carburetor slide. Now we're putting the actuator in there. Repeating the process on this side. Just want to make sure everything's moving nice and smoothly and everything's lining up. Now I'm about to realize that part of the uh, actuating arm for the number two uh, throttle valve body there the, the, uh, is uh, it's come out slightly and it's not letting all of the, uh, the holes line up so that I can bolt those to the throttle linkage. So I'm just putting a little mark there on the actuator so that when I'm fighting with that spring under pressure and I'm trying to get that set screw in there to lock that actuator down onto the shaft, I'm not trying to guess where the divot on the shaft is. I already know. Made it a lot easier. The spring was very tight. So I have the um, the docking plate fixture is clamped to the table so that gives me the ability to fight against that spring force without having everything trying to move around unexpectedly. So we managed to get that actuator lined up with the hole. A 
here's where I've realized that other one's kind of slipped out from where it needs to be. There's a little spring clip in there. So I was really not wanting that clip to fall out of place and potentially having to take all of that apart again. So, dodged a bullet there. I'm just double checking this head screw, making sure that it's sitting in the recess properly. And then now there's a little jam nut on there. Let me make sure that that's tight. Just attach that fuel pump actuator, like I mentioned before, with the spring. This is the part where the spring goes flying across the shop. Not really, but I wouldn't have been surprised. I was being careful. So I'm kind of eyeing up how carburetor number four is going to sit on there, and I realize that it's likely I'm going to have to pull what I have assembled so far completely off of the fixture jig. I'm just kind of looking at the rear stay bracket there, getting it in place, everything bolts up nice. Uh, I'm commenting about um, the fact that those two bolts that I just installed there haven't been cleaned yet. I've been looking for a plater, but I haven't had much luck in finding one. So I'm going to pull this off there. I'm getting ready to pull the carburetor off the plate, and I'm thinking that this is probably a good place to to end this video. I don't want to bore you guys too much, but this is a good stage. I removed it off of the fixture. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this video entertaining or if it helped you in any way, why not uh, give it a thumbs up? Or if you have any questions, drop me a comment. This is what we have so far. So stay tuned for part three. I'm sure that'll be the final part of the carburetor rebuild series and uh, see what kind of trouble we can uh, get ourselves into.